In this movie, we will generate spot welds using the easy spot function, validate those welds location using the weld advisor, and finally, we will publish these welds to Team Center, making them available for other applications. Let's begin by going into the weld assistant and then the easy spot function. You'll notice that we can specify any type of discrete weld that we'd like. In this case, we'll pick a resistance spot weld. And then there are 10 different settings that help determine where the spot welds will be located. Each customer can specify their own values. Note here that we are picking components and not faces or edges in order to determine where these spot welds will be located. Upon OK, the system looks for the overlaps on two panel, three panel, or four panels, and then applies those rules and creates the spot welds. Notice in this case that the welds are indicated by spheres and they're color coded either yellow for a 3T or green for a 2T weld. Each weld is saved as an individual feature available on the part navigator. By looking at the properties of a weld, we can see the attributes that are written for each individual weld. Another method to work with EasySpot is to preview the overlap regions. You still select components and the rules will be invoked to determine where the welds are located. But before welds are generated, the user will have control over certain parameters per overlap region. Notice the different regions are divided up as to two panel or three panel combinations. By selecting a specific region, the welds are highlighted and we can determine whether we want to go ahead and create the welds there or change some of the parameters. In this case here, we'll change the z-direction and then go ahead and generate that welds location. And we'll do the same thing here, changing that z-direction. This time though, we're going to change the side of metal that these welds are on. Make this selection. You can see that the welds have shifted from one side to the other side and then we'll go ahead and we're going to actually change from a resistance spot weld to a clinch weld. So you can change the type of weld as well. Saying OK goes ahead and generates the remainder of the welds. And we turn the sphere off. You can see that those welds were created as a clinch. In order to validate that the welds are in the correct location, we will invoke the weld advisor. Notice that there are 16 different discrete weld checks. Each customer can specify the check values that match their own design rules. Note that each discrete weld can have its own set of checking values. Select the welds, the checks, and then perform analysis. Notice how fast the checks run and the results dialog gives you a number of options for filtering and reviewing the weld results. Let's first take a look at all the welds that have failed. Notice they're listed as individual welds. By right-clicking on them, we have the option to center the failed weld in our work area. And then by expanding on the um, box, we see the exact reason for the failure. Now we can go ahead, in this case, let's just delete right from there. Now let's filter on the checkers. In this case here, each checker is listed and you can see that all the summary of uh, results are underneath this. So here we can go to this weld that's failed, center the object again. And this time, let's edit it. Let's move it into a correct location. Right from the results dialog, I can hit edit, finish, and the weld is corrected. center the object again, and this time let's delete that weld because it seems to be in a bad location. Now that we're happy with our welds, let's go ahead and expose them to Team Center. In order to do that, we turn the Preferences, Team Center Integration, Feature Publish on, and we select the welds types that we want published, say OK, and then it's a simple matter of just saving that work part. And when the work part gets saved, each one of those welds will be created as an individual item in Team Center. The information window lets us know the welds that passed and failed. In this case, all of the welds were successfully published into Team Center. If we turn the page and look at the Structure Manager in Team Center, you can see that each one of these welds is now an individual PS connection object. If we right click on one of these welds and say Show Connected To, we'll be able to determine what 
parents are of that weld. That link was established in NX and passed right along to Team Center. That concludes our demonstration of creation of welds, validate welds, and then publish them into Team Center.